Well, it's Tuesday, November the 19th, and I am way behind here at the sawmill. I was hoping to have this on the mill over the weekend, and I'm way behind. But we'll get it done, that's all that matters. White pine, our length, catch that bark. Keep it down there. 89 inches, just over seven feet. Down here on the operator's side, 18 inches, and I've already checked the other end, it's also 18 inches, so there's no taper in this log. It's pretty straight and it's pretty consistent here on the thickness, that's good. All right guys, this is a seven footer. Most of your large sawmills wouldn't even buy anything like this. Their minimum's eight feet. Actually eight feet and about four or five inches. So something like this, a small sawmill like mine can get some good wood out of it. Because if I wouldn't have took this, it would have probably ended up in the burn pile. My buddy uh, Butch and his son who brought me the white pine about a month ago for the timber frame had a few of these mixed in with it. Most of them were 10 and 12 footers. And there's I think five of these. And these will actually make some really nice lumber. Even though they're short, I can stack them all in the same stack and dry them at the same length, not to mix anything in there and have a pretty good stack of boards. Maybe get five or 600 feet out of all of them. I've got a pretty decent amount of them down there. It's probably more than I think actually. So we'll make a square can out of this and try to get the widest boards possible. And I'll show you what I'm doing here as far as my strategy on how to get the best boards out of it. And this is how I saw for grade, which means I'm going to try to saw these boards out of this log for the highest grade possible. What's high grade boards? Less defects and less knots. And with pine, it's really hard to avoid getting knots on your boards, but you can reduce that if you just take your time and take a good look at your timber before you saw into it. I'm gonna show you my strategy real quick on how I saw for grade here at the mill. So all the pine around here is pretty much the same. You have knot clusters of limbs all in one area, then you'll have some nice clear wood and then more knot clusters. The distance between these clusters is about 32 inches and the same thing below it down to the butt of the log, about 32 inches. So you can have some nice clear boards between these clusters here. I don't mind the knots so much. Some people really hate them when they get rid of them. When you're sawing, you can try to fight that as much as you can. You want minimal knots. I don't mind the knots, but if I can do without them, I, you know, I'd rather be without them. So here's what I do. I went ahead and turned this log to the best face that I want to saw parallel with the bark with. What's that mean? I want to saw parallel with this bark on this face. And this is the best face. Right here, not so much. It's got a lot of clusters right here. This knot cluster ring that goes all the way around. Gosh, there's no clear face anywhere. So down here on the bottom of these boards, there's going to be knots on about every one of them. Up here toward the top, we had a little bit of a break in the knots, actually. Right here on this top section, it's about 12 or 13 inches wide. There's no knots right there or none showing. There could be some under the bark, but you got to kind of hope there's not. And when we get down to the juvenile wood, which is really near the pith, knots will start coming up. It's hard to avoid them at that point. But you might get a few nice boards on the outside cuts before you run into that. So I turn this log with my face I want to saw from up right here. And that's the first thing you want to do is determine your best face and turn it up here on the sawmill. And then you want to come down here and put a mark. So we're down here on the operator side of the log. I know my best face is pointing up. I'll put a line across it, little lumber tree on there. That way I know this is my best face and a little arrow pointing there. It's probably not really necessary, but kind of let you guys know what I mean there. So this establishes my reference face that I want to have the best boards come off of. Now what I'll do now is flip this thing over 180 degrees and make sure this reference face is lying flat on the saw bed and I'll make my first cut from down here. And the reason I'm gonna do that is that will take out any taper in this log. This log doesn't have much taper. It may have just a little when we flip it over. But if this log had a lot of taper in it, you would get rid of it. And what this does, it makes this up here flat. So if there's taper down here or wherever in the log, you're gonna remove that taper You'll flip it back over 180 degrees to where this will be flat on the bed at that time. And then up here at your reference face, at the place you want to saw parallel with the bark, is nice and flat with the saw head. And you go ahead and make that cut. And then I'll turn on its sides 
and go ahead as well and square up these sides as well. I'm not doing live edge today, thank goodness. This is something different. These are five quarter boards. And that might not make complete sense to you. Hopefully it does. I'm not the best teacher. But once I start sawing into this thing and you see me flipping this around, you'll kind of get the idea of what I was going for. Especially when we put this back on the top and it's parallel to the saw head and we're sawing completely parallel with the bark. So that's enough talk. Let's get this thing fired up and warm up this diesel. See what kind of boards we can make out of this. These will make some really nice cabinets. I've got some ideas for some cabinets in the shop, or the barn rather. And uh, that's one good thing about white pine or yellow pine. I could put these straight into the kiln green and in about three to four weeks, they'll be dried down to 8%. So I may saw up a bunch of this pine here toward the end of this week and next week, just so I can get a full load on the next load that goes in the kiln. So, but that's uh, another video topic altogether. So let's go ahead and get the sawmill fired up and get going. 